This is the plaintiff, Tracy Rosal. She says she rented the defendant's house, and when she moved out, they never did a proper walkthrough and are now keeping her security deposit. What they're doing is totally illegal, and it now entitles her to sue for double the amount of her security. So she's suing for $1,450. These are the defendants Mark and Kathy Dusso. Kathy says the plaintiff told them that her son killed himself in the house, and quite frankly, it took them some time to be comfortable going in to do the walkthrough. When they did, it was a flea-infested mess that needed to be fumigated. There's no way they owe this woman any money, and they can't wait to present their case to the judge today in this court. They're accused of lackadaisical landlording. All parties, please raise your right hands. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Leon is our presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Doug. You're welcome. All right, Ms. Rizal, you are suing for uh, double your security deposit because according to you, your former landlords, the Dussos, have wrongfully withheld it. Tell me what happened. My son and I moved down to the house August 15th of 2020. And we renewed the lease in September of 2021. And I had my son added to the lease. Did you sign the um, lease? My son, I was out of town at the time that they re-signed the lease. And I, my son was going to bring it to me and have me sign it so they had a, they could see it. Okay. But I signed the original lease. Um, on September 14th, I got the phone call that no parent should ever get. And they told me that my son was dead. He how did was he only die? 19. How, how, he was 19? How did he die? He hung himself. Oh, I'm so sorry. In the and his son's had gone over to the house, they found him, and did I you, didn't believe it. Did he leave a note? No. Well, had no, he been no. depressed? He, we have a history in our family of depression, but he was fine. He was actually happy because he had um, gotten a better job. So everybody that you talked to, nobody expected this. So I had to get a ride over to the house. Where did he do this in the house? He did it in the basement. You didn't go down there, right? They didn't? No. Okay, okay. So my daughter was with me, and then my parents called Bob and asked him if he could come down to Ohio to see if he could help out. And who is Bob? We're um, still married. Is he, he lives in Michigan and I live in Ohio. Is he your son's father? No. I called my son's okay. father. He never came down. He did not help me with the arrangements. I'm sorry to hear that. He I, did and not I'm help so sorry that you've been through this. This all happened when? In September 14th. <sighs> okay. And I called Kathy that night and told her that. My son had passed away. And then the next day on the 15th, I told her, I said, there was just no way that I could go back to the house. I was already moving out temporarily. My son wanted to have some time to see if he could make it on his own. So I said we would do it temporarily, but I would stay on the lease. And so where had you been living? Stuff, I moved just a mile down the road, but my stuff was still in the house. OK, whatever that that was a decision that you folks made. And did anybody let the Dussos know that 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 a, a 19 year old was in charge of their house and their property? Did they know that you had moved out? No, I wasn't completely moved out. I was in the position of moving out and I was going to let them know when I um 
Okay. Let them know what was going on. But so I never you explained to them you to. can't go back to the house, and they are. How do they react to that? There, I would hope that they'd be understanding, and right. um, and so now they've let you out of the lease, and or you hadn't even signed the lease, I guess. And now it's time for the security deposit. And what discussion comes up about that? I first I asked them if I needed to pay for anything in October because we needed a few extra days to finish cleaning out the house. They said no, no worry about that. There was no rush because Kathy's daughter was going to move in November 1st. She understood why I didn't want to go back to the house. She came to my son's memorial in Toledo, which was September 28th, and I let her know on October 4th, the house was vacated. We took pictures. The house was very, very clean. Um, the only thing we didn't do was steam clean the carpet because at the memorial, she had told me that they were going to replace the carpeting because her daughter wanted something different. Okay. So we said, okay. So we did all the vacuuming, wiped down the walls, cleaned the, everything in the house. Then I kept asking for a walkthrough. They said that they wanted to have the priest wash the house. And that's when she said that the side door had been kicked in and made it sound like the whole house was trash. And I'm like, the house Queen. Let me talk now to the Dussos. Which of you wants to okay. answer questions, Mark or Kathy? I'll go ahead. Okay. Kathy. So, Kathy, can you um, explain to me why her security deposit wasn't returned? What were the issues? Well, first of all, um, we do re wedding receptions. So we were like extremely busy and I was working full time beside that. So that's why. And then also I was waiting for the priest to uh, bless the house because I didn't feel comfortable going in there unless that was done. And it took our priest a month to get over there to do that. But as we did the walkthrough, uh, the back door, the jam, um, I sent you a picture of it that was totally replaced. Unfortunately, uh, we did not get pictures before, but I could not deadbolt the lock. Right. The so back do you have pictures of what was... you kept money for? Do you have pictures of how it was damaged? I do not. Okay. At, do you have a receipt for um, fixing it? I do not. So what do you have to prove that it was damaged? Either one of you can answer. We have the pictures that it was uh, where the frame was repaired. And then in the basement, they must well, have. We're well, not no, sure wait, wait, don't go to the basement. Uh, let's talk about the jam. When you're going to just show me a good jam. So how is that going to tell me that it had been damaged beforehand? Well, the whole thing, it looked like we, we figured they might have kicked it in when the paramedics tried to get to him because it's like someone had tried to fix it at the same point of like the water line that was broken in the basement. What happened with the, there. well, they, she well, wouldn't know. The she off. didn't go, you didn't go in there, right, um, Ms. Uh, Rosol? I went in there a couple of times in the beginning and at the end. Okay. So and did you see the door jam that's in question? The, um, I didn't, the, there was nothing wrong with the door. We locked it up tight. Um, when did you leave the place? I, October 4th. When did you guys go to inspect the place, Mr. and Mrs. Dussault? November 14th. A month after they leave? Is that because of the priest? Right. Yeah. Yeah, so we didn't even go to the house. And then when we opened the door, it was locked. The door locked and it closed and the bolt did go in, but there was nothing in there where you can see the the new piece of wood that he stuck in the whole jam, but he just cut the whole jam out, redid the whole thing. And in the basement, the water was turned, they must have turned the water off, so they knew the pipe was broke, so we're not sure if he did his accident there, because it was one of the big pipes on top that was pulled off, busted in half, so they had to take the heating ducts out and everything to fix the plumbing. But someone turned the water off, so they knew it was leaking before it happened. So we, then we went and had that fixed, and then the outside, the siding. Are we the talking about at the, the site of the suicide? The pipes? Yes, yes. The big copper, the steel pipes going across the ceiling, it was the only thing high enough. So we're thinking, well, maybe that's where the accident happened. And that, that's what broke the, I mean, something broke the plumbing in half. I mean, it busted the line right in half. This is a picture of the door jam after it's fixed. Yeah, yeah you can see where they cut the whole thing yeah. out and then they redid it, put all new wood in it, and then redid the jam.
that whole middle was gone. There was nothing there, just the little plate screwed on with two big long screws. And then there was pieces of plastic. There was a piece of rubber. All kinds of stuff were filling the hole that was there. Okay. So the door would shut, but it's like, you know, you can't show it to new people coming in wouldn't want to live there because it there was nothing like to hold the door. If you pushed on it, it would have pushed right in. Is this after the repairs? So those are basically the three. Yes, that's after the repairs. What did the plumbing repairs cost? 125 Then uh, you're also deducting for carpet cleaning. I understood Ms. Roselle to say that your daughter wanted to replace the carpets anyway, so not to... Do you recall saying anything about that to her? Yes. All right, so then why are you trying to deduct from her security deposit for carpet cleaning? Well, when my carpet um, cleaner guy got there, I asked him if the carpets were still good enough to um, salvage because they smelled really bad, like urine, dog urine and dog. And he said he could get them clean. Okay. Well, that, I mean, that's fine. But if you tell someone, don't worry about it, I'm putting a new carpet. That's why they left the carpet that way, because you told them not to worry about it. What's the next thing that you deducted for? Um, abandoning the lease and then vacating the lease early. Okay, let's talk about that because my understanding was that you understood that she couldn't set foot in there again. So you told her, okay, we'll let you out of the lease. Is that not accurate? No, Negative. Never said we let her out of the lease. We just figured we'd let her we'd let her out of the lease, but you weren't getting your deposit back. But if you're telling her don't worry about it, then you're not saying, yeah, you can move out, but we're keeping your security deposit. That's what you should have said if that's what you wanted to do. You can't say you can walk away and then and then you, nobody's even saying to her, well, no, we're keeping it because you're breaking your lease. You're saying to her, we have to see what the damages are. So, OK, let's talk about the damages. What else did you right. was the is there any the, other the, bill the, you're the, actually the, out? Any damage? The one the, the one door, the door that was kicked in. OK, the door jam. Was 150. OK. Door jam was 150. And then the um, the siding, we can't get the gentleman to even come out till the summertime, but they had screwed the dog fence to the side of the house. So now there's holes in the, in the siding on the side of the house. Okay, let's talk about that. I, let me see. Siding. I have a picture of that, and I'm trying to understand uh, the issue. When you say a dog fence, what are you referring to? They, they just put a gate. There was never a gate there. So, so that was a, uh, there yeah. was a, there was a, that's just a driveway. And then they put a gate to keep their dog in the back. Oh, so this entire gate was not there before? No, no. Okay. So they put the gate in. Is that accurate, Ms. Russell? Right. Yes. And then they yeah, took it with they them. gave me permission to put one up. Okay. Did you give her permission to put a gate up? We did. But we didn't tell them to screw it to the house. We didn't know they were going to do that. Right. And so... So they, they can't even come out till spring and even look at this. I mean, they're not huge, but it's letting water run down the inside wall into the basement. No, right, so right. they stuck a bolt back in it, yeah. Yeah, you know, when um, before you give somebody permission to put up a gate, you, you probably uh, have learned this lesson. You want to speak to the person putting up the gate and finding out what they have in mind when it's your property. But this is right, certainly right. not what they had in mind to be bolting things to the siding and breaking the siding like that. Can I say something about the water line? The water line, yeah. My son, he, it, he didn't, um, when he hung himself, he did it on the steel beam uh, across the house from where the water line was cracked. We turned off the water lines because we saw the crack and the water line and it was leaking. We turned the water off to prevent the basement from flooding. And we were going to show him when we did the walkthrough where it would crack so he could replace that little tiny piece You didn't of even piping. tell them you'd shut off the water. And you have a phone and you have their number and you have their text and you've texted them. You could call them. Because you could do I all these things, but you had never. Yeah, I understand, but you don't have to wait for a walkthrough to tell them we shut the water off. They sent somebody there to clean the carpets. That's how they found out that you guys had shut the water off um, to the house. Right. Well, and I was going to, well, first I was waiting for the walkthrough. Then when I realized that they weren't going to do the walkthrough, when she asked me about the water line, I told her why we shut the water line off. And what was it? According to you, Kathy, what did she tell you was the reason she shut the water line? Because it was leaking. Okay. And according to you, that's her fault. Why? Well, it broke right in half, so it didn't leak before. They had no issue the week before that. <laughs> you know, so it's like something must have happened during this accident because it's like it was broke right in half. If you see in the in the pictures, you can see how corroded the water line where it was built at. 
It was all corroded and there's no choice but to turn the water line off. We didn't but break they, it. But nobody had said, but hey, he, there's a huge leak in the in the that requires the water to be shut off before the incident happened. You know, so I'm yeah, not, I don't, I don't know. I, I think it is a very reasonable conclusion that it's because of what happened. I, I'm sorry, I do, because if there was such a tremendous leak that it was going to damage the house and it required shutting off the water, there would have been some communication to them saying, hey, there's a tremendous leak. You need to get a plumber out here. So to suggest it's a pre-existing no, thing, a I'm sorry, leak. I'm sorry, Ms. Ms. Russell, I don't see it that way. I don't see it that way. This okay. is exactly where it happened. And, you know, I want to I want to I want to say something to you because I, I'm, I know you're in tremendous pain and I have a very, very firm belief that people who take their own lives are somewhere up there saying, what was I thinking? You know, it is a momentary decision, a momentary lapse in judgment that unfortunately they can't ever take back. Money. I am so sorry that you are going through this. You do, of course, understand it has nothing to do with my legal decision on a security deposit. Right. I would love to live yeah. in a world where I could just be queen and decide who, who gets what based on how I feel, but that's not what I'm here for. I am not paid to do that. I am paid to rule according to the law. And that's why we're sitting here talking about plumbing and, you know, and, and carpets at, at a moment where I, I just, if I, you know, I, if I could hug you, I would hug you and tell you how sorry I am for your loss. So let me get back to what is my job. Um, based on what I've heard, um, this is my ruling. You are not going to be entitled to deduct the carpeting because there was a comment made to her not to worry about the carpeting. You changed your mind on that, but she was entitled to rely on that and not steam cleaning it herself and doing it at a cheaper price. She doesn't have to pay this because you let her out of that responsibility, Kathy. Um, she's responsible for the plumbing. She's responsible for the repair of the door. That means that there's $450 left in the security deposit that should go that way, except for the holes in the siding. I, when I look at this, I am pretty clear that this is not the way it should have been done. That pole that is at the end should have been by the house, and then the, then the pole isn't touching the house. It's not supposed to have chicken wire in the last end there and pulling the chicken wire to and then drilling holes into the siding. The question is, what is that going to end up costing? And so now, since I don't even have an estimate of what it would end up costing, from anybody, I have to guess what it might end up costing to repair that. And I'm not even sure what the accurate repair is. I guess the repair would be the replacing the siding that's, that's got holes in it and extending the fence appropriately, having another chunk of fence, right, Mr. Dussault? Well, they took it out now, so it's gone. Oh, so it's all gone. So it's just the... Yeah. Um, it's just the holes in the siding. Did you the, have the holes? Yeah. Uh, what is the game plan? Can those be repaired or does this, does the piece have to be replaced? I don't I'm, know. How I'm not sure if they, it'd probably be better to put a piece of siding on there. So that's what yeah. we are kind of waiting for. All right. I'm going to guesstimate that that'll cost $200 and I'm going to order you to return the remaining 250 to Ms. Rizal and Ms. Rizal, I'm not going to double it because that is a penalty that's up to the judge and it's, for me to do when I feel that someone's acted wrongfully. I don't think they intended to act wrongfully. I think that they were wrong. And that's different from uh, intending to cheat you out of your money. They felt they were right. I'm disagreeing with them on a portion of it. So I'm not going to double it. I'm ordering 250 return to Ms. Russell. And I wish everybody good luck. Yeah. So the plaintiff who had sued for $1,450 is only going to get $250 back. Mr. and Mrs. Dussault, let me ask you a, a question or two. It took you a good while yourself to go into the house after, uh, after the death happened in there. Explain to me and for all of us how the, the presence of the priest in the house has helped you uh, with the um, home at this point. Well, he uh, said a prayer and got rid of all the evil spirits that were in that house. And, um, yeah, it made me feel a lot better. Okay. Well, that's, that's, it's good to know how you feel about that. Ms. Rousseau, how do you feel about it? You, you are expecting a lot more money. Uh, you aren't getting it. Are you, are you okay with it? How do you feel? No, I don't think I should have been responsible because that was an old pipe that was cracked and was leaking. All right. Well, the judge explained her, her, her decision to you, and uh, she just didn't accept that. Sorry about it. 
You know, Doug, this is such a sad case. Um, I, I want to tell you something about security deposits. In most states, landlords have a duty to itemize what they're withholding. They have to show, I'm withholding, say, 48 bucks for this lock. They have to be specific about what they're doing. In a lot of cases, in a lot of states, if the landlord doesn't comply with that law, the tenant gets the money back and sometimes twice the money. My mother passed 10 years ago without a will. I am the only child. The family went through her things and took what they wanted, including her ashes, guns, coins, jewelry, without my permission. Can I get my mom's ashes back? Can I only sue for money? Well, when you die in test state, common law rules apply about the order of succession, who takes in order. And spouse, surviving spouse is always at the top of the heap. They're the first ones. So if they came in and just took everything or sent their, their minions, you know, other uh, family members of theirs over and said, hey, take everything out, it might have all been taken out at, at the request of the surviving spouse. And she may be out of luck in terms of suing for damages, trying to get the ashes, trying to get anything. Uh, so it's not clear that she even has a cause of action because we don't know if the, the surviving spouse is. took, yeah, who the family is. Right. But it usually goes surviving spouse issue, children, right? Children. And then to parents or siblings. Then I it think. goes yeah. to, then it goes up. Right. It goes sideways, then down, and then up. Right. Right. <laughs> and then the other sideways. So right. it goes to the, so the sideways to your spouse, right. then it goes, if there's no spouse, then it goes to your children. Right. If there are no children and no spouse, then it goes to your parents. Right. If your parents are gone, then it goes to your siblings. Right, but you're to, we're both talking about common law rules. States might have different variants, yeah. variances of that, variations of that. I get the impression that she might've been a child when this happens. Could because be. Because she is all of a sudden a decade later asking questions right. and there, right. so there's, yeah. is there some, um, Having said all that, I just said, if, if I have uh, uh, the ashes of your mother and you right. want them, I would give them to you.